Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. We're starting a new chapter today, uh, chapter eight, which is called More on Functions and Graphs. All right. So this uh, chapter starts with a section that's hopefully a lot of review, uh, section 8.1, Graphing and Writing Linear Functions. The objectives in this section are to graph linear functions, write an equation of a line using function notation, uh, these two parts are hopefully mostly review. And then finding equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. So back in the old days of our uh, beginning algebra course, we would touch on uh, parallel and perpendicular lines a little bit in chapter three, uh, and then go into more detail in this chapter. All right, so with a new chapter comes a new SLO. Uh, we are now working on SLOC, which is construct graphs of inequalities, linear and nonlinear functions, and conic sections. All right, so let's get into it. Um, again, hopefully a lot of review. Uh, so at some point in the past, uh, hopefully you learned uh, several methods for graphing linear equations. First, you have the point plotting method, which is where you make a table of points. Usually when you're graphing a linear equation, we recommend three points. There's the intercepts method where you graph the X and Y intercept of the line. And then the slope and Y intercept method. This one seems to be uh, the one that most of my students prefer. All right, and then in terms of function notation, remember that f of x means the same thing as y. All right, we will kind of talk about functions uh, on and off as we go. All right, so here's an example. We're going to graph the linear function f of x equals one third x minus two. So now I will bring up the tablet. Okay, so when we get to the part where we draw the graph, I'm going to ask you to bear with me. Uh, sometimes it's a little glitchy when I try to uh, draw graphs on my tablet because I'm drawing on top of that grid there, which is a uh, picture. And sometimes the picture wants to move around or do weird things. So uh, hopefully it'll work out. Okay, so we have f of x equals uh, one third x minus two. So I just want to remind you that this means the same thing as y equals one third x minus two. This linear equation is written in slope intercept form, which hopefully you remember is y equals mx plus b. So what that means is that the y intercept, which is the point where the line crosses the y axis, is the point zero negative two. Uh, so why don't we start there? I'm gonna put a point at uh, zero negative two. All right, that worked out pretty well. And then the slope is one third. All right, so hopefully somewhere along the line, uh, you learn to think of slope as rise over run. So this basically gives you directions to the next point. So what I'm gonna do now is, all right, uh, let's see. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Um, so I'm gonna start at the point zero, negative two. I'm gonna go up one here, let's do this. I'm gonna switch to a different color. So these green points that you're about to see are not part of the line. Uh, they're just to kind of help you follow along. So when I go up one unit, that brings me to that point. Can you see that little green point there? Let's see, maybe I should make it bigger. Okay, uh, so I'm going up one and then I'm going over three. All right, so that point is on the line. So I'll do that in black. Uh, and let's do that one more time. So I'll go up one, which actually technically puts me there. I was a little bit off. And then uh, one, two, three. All right, so my line is gonna pass through the black points. 
Uh, each time I wanted to get from one point to the next point, I would go up one and then over three. Here, I'll just put a little, okay, like a little staircase. All right, so now when I draw my line, I'll do a nice solid line. Uh, it's going to look something like, well, we'll start by going through those points. When you're doing this on paper, you really should use a ruler or some kind of straight edge. All right, but I'm pretty happy with that. That is the graph of the linear function f of x equals one third x minus two. All right, so let's go back to the presentation and see what we have next. All right, so on the next couple slides, um, I don't think I have any examples. This is just review of uh, different tools that we're gonna use to either uh, graph lines, or I think mostly in this section, it's to write linear equations. All right, so first of all, uh, we're gonna need the slope formula. The slope of the line passing through the points x1, y1, and x2, y2 is given by this formula, m equals, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, in other words, the difference in the y's divided by the difference in the x's. All right, we already mentioned slope intercept form, the equation of the line with slope m and y intercept at zero comma b can be written as either y equals mx plus b or f of x equals mx plus b if you're using function notation, which is what we're doing in this uh, section. All right, and then we have the point slope formula. The equation of the line with slope m passing through the point x1, y1 is given by this formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So what that is, it's the slope formula kind of written in a different form. And again, I'm really hoping that you've seen all of this in some other math class. Again, we used to cover this in our uh, beginning algebra course. All right, uh, we got a few more things here. Occasionally we encounter horizontal and vertical lines. A horizontal line has an equation of the form y equals b or f of x equals b. And the slope of a horizontal line is zero. A vertical line has equation x equals a, and that's kind of the only way to write it. Uh, a vertical line does not represent a function. So uh, here's another thing that I'm hoping you've encountered in some other class. We have something called the vertical line test to determine whether or not a graph represents a function. And what that says basically, here, let me see if I can scribble a picture here for you. What that says, I'm just gonna kind of scribble a graph over here. Okay, so let's say that my graph looked something like this. What the vertical line test says is that that graph uh, does not represent a function because it is possible to draw a vertical line through that graph that intersects the graph in more than one point. So a vertical line when the function or when the graph itself is a vertical line, uh, that fails the vertical line test because let's say here is your vertical line. So the test says, is it possible to draw a vertical line uh, through that graph that intersects in more than one point? Well, yes, it is. Just draw the same vertical line over top of it. You, I don't know if you can really see that all that well. Uh, but if you draw the same vertical line over top of it, not only does it uh, hit it in more than one point, it, it, it kind of hits it everywhere, all right? Um, so a vertical line does not represent a function. All right, so we will not write those uh, using function notation. 
the slope of a vertical line is undefined. In other words, it has no slope. So I want you to think about the difference between the second statement and the fourth statement. Uh, earlier, we said the slope of a horizontal line is zero, all right? It has a slope and the slope is equal to the number zero. Vertical line does not have a slope at all. The slope is undefined. So those are two very different things. It's, well, it really is literally like saying on the one hand, zero divided by four is zero, but four divided by zero is undefined. It doesn't have an answer. So it, it's completely uh, analogous to that. All right. Uh, and then, oh, and as we already mentioned, a vertical line does not represent a function. All right, so we have a few examples here. I have these all ready to go on the tablet. So I'll just show you what they say and then we will uh, switch over to the tablet. So we want to write, hang on, uh, the equation of each described line. And uh, we're gonna write the equation using function notation. On your online homework, well, I'll, I'll try to remember to tell you that once we get our first answer, I think it'll make more sense then. All right, so here are the uh, four examples. So I'll give you a second to look those over. I've got a cat in my lap that I need to shoo away. All right, and I'm gonna bring up the tablet. All right, so here's the first example. We wanna write the equation of a linear function that has a slope of negative three and a y-intercept at zero, negative one-fifth. Uh, all right, cat came back, so I'm kind of shifting things around here. Uh, this is a very easy problem. Since we're given the slope and the y-intercept, that just means that we can use the formula f of x equals mx plus b. The slope is negative three, so that's m. And the y-intercept is negative one-fifth. So believe it or not, this is all they want. They just want us to write f of x equals negative three x minus one-fifth. What could be simpler? So that's a problem that I always hope 100% of the class will get right on the exam. Um, what I was starting to tell you a minute ago, uh, so when I use these problems in a face-to-face -face class, I always have to think about, um, you know, am I going to ding somebody if they write y equals negative three x minus one fifth? It did say write it using function notation. Uh, your online homework will likely allow you to be a little bit lazy with this because I think what they do is they set up their answer like this. They write the f of x for you and then you just have to fill in uh, this part. All right. So you kind of luck out that way. You're, um, it's kind of hard to mess that up. But on the flip side, I think what has happened maybe once or twice is that somebody will write f of x again in the box or maybe write y equals negative three x minus one fifth. Uh, make sure that on your online homework, the only thing you write in this box is negative three x minus one fifth because the f of x is already there, okay? All right. <clears throat> so not surprisingly, uh, letter A is the easiest one. Now they're gonna get a little harder. So in the next problem, we wanna write the equation of the linear function with slope two thirds uh, and the line passes through the point negative nine, four. All right, so for this one, we're going to use the point slope formula, which is y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. All right, so now, the slope is two thirds and the given point is negative nine comma four. So you just have to be careful with your negative signs. So I'm gonna put my negative nine like that. I'm gonna put my four like that. 
and then build the rest of the equation around it. So after I've put in all the numbers, it says y minus four equals two thirds times x minus negative nine. See what I did there? All right, so remember uh, they wanted us to write this using function notation. Function notation is kind of like slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Uh, except you have to remember to write f of x instead of y. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that x minus negative 9. I'm going to rewrite that as x plus 9. Now I'm going to distribute the 2 thirds. And that's going to give me y minus 4 equals 2 thirds x plus what is two thirds times nine? Two thirds times nine is six, right? All right, almost done. Uh, now I'm gonna add four to both sides, solving for y. And that gives me y equals two thirds x plus 10. And the very last step is to write it using function notation. So the final official answer is f of x equals 2 thirds x plus 10. All right, that's not too hard, right? Okay, letter C. So in this one, we want to write the equation of the linear function uh, where the line passes through the points negative 9, negative 2, and negative 3, 10. So what I always recommend um, is this. So uh, since we're given two points, the first step is going to be to use the slope formula. And anytime I use the slope formula, I always like to label my points x1, y1 and x2, y2, because it's very easy to put the wrong numbers in the wrong places. All right, so step one is to use the slope formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so y2 is 10, y1 is negative 2, x2 is negative 3, x1 is negative 9. Uh, notice I have to be very careful with the negative signs. 10 minus negative 2 is 12, and negative 3 minus negative 9 is negative 3 plus 9, which is six. So the slope of this line is two. So now it's going to be just like uh, the previous problem. I know that the slope of this line is two. And I actually have two points that it passes through. Uh, but at this point, I really only need one. All right, so this would be a really good time for you to pause the video. And uh, try to finish this problem using the fact that the slope of this line is two. And you can actually use either one of these points. So I'll tell you what, why don't you use, um, well, the one that's labeled x1, y1. Why don't you use negative nine, negative two, okay? And then when you're all done, uh, come back and we will compare notes. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to try that. Now I um, deliberately pulled a trick, or I'm about to deliberately pull a trick on you. Okay, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I encourage you to use the point negative nine, negative two. I'm going to use the other point, all right, because I want to show you that we will all get the same answer, all right? So uh, let's see. I am going to use, well, we all have to use 2 for m. 
Uh, but instead of using negative nine, negative two, I am going to use negative three comma 10, all right? So again, I'm hoping that you use the other point because I want you to see we'll get the same answer. So y minus 10 equals two times x minus negative three. Uh, really looks an awful lot like the last problem. So instead of x minus negative three, I'm gonna say x plus three. Any minute now, my cat might pop his head up and say hello. All right, uh, distribute this two. And that is going to give me, let me just make some uh, space up here. That is going to give me uh, y minus 10 equals two x plus six. And now I'm gonna add 10 to both sides. Let me just make a little bit more space here. All right, so y equals two x plus 16. Remember, we're supposed to write the answer using function notation. So using function notation, it would say f of x equals two x plus 16. So I'm hoping that you used the other point, negative nine, negative two, but got the same answer. Okay. All right. So the last example in this batch, we want to write the equation of a linear function where the line is horizontal and passes through the point negative three, one. Horizontal and vertical line problems tend to be really, really easy uh, when you know what you're doing. They should take about 30 seconds. So uh, remember what I reminded you about earlier, which is that a horizontal line has an equation uh, in the form y equals b. All right, uh, so now we just have to decide what the number b is. So since this is our first time going through this, let me just uh, try to convince you that what I'm about to say is correct. Uh, so let's find the point negative three, one. There it is. So if I draw a uh, horizontal line through that point, what all of those points on that line are going to have in common is that their y coordinate just like this point is going to be one. So here's the point zero one, over here is the point two one. So the equation of this line is y equals one. But remember we have to write it using function notation. So we're going to write f of x equals one. And that's all there is to it. All right, and that brings us to parallel and perpendicular lines. All right, so remember that parallel lines have the same slope and perpendicular lines have slopes that are uh, sometimes called negative reciprocals. I am not a big fan of that term, but it gets the job done, so I just go with it. Uh, so examples of negative reciprocals are numbers like three fifths and negative five thirds. So flip it over, change the sign. Uh, the sort of more grown up way of saying uh, perpendicular is if the product of the slopes is negative one, uh, but we can go with negative reciprocals. Now I'm hoping that uh, someone in your past has explained to you why uh, parallel lines have the same slope and perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slope. I always used to do it. Uh, when I taught beginning algebra, uh, not going to do it now. If you're interested, again, that would be a good uh, discussion topic. You could bring that up as a, uh, as a muddy point. All right, so the steps uh, for finding a parallel or perpendicular line look like this. First, find the slope of the given line. 
and then find the slope of the requested line. So if the requested line is parallel, you just use the same slope. And if it's perpendicular, you use the negative reciprocal slope. And then finally use uh, the point slope formula to write the equation of the requested line. So here are the two examples we're going to look at. We're gonna find the equation of each line and write it using function notation. So first uh, we'll find the equation of a line passing through one five and parallel to f of x equals three x minus four. And then we'll find the equation of a line through negative two, negative three, perpendicular to the line three x plus two y equals five. All right, here we go. So first we're finding the equation of a line parallel to f of x equals three x minus four and passing through the point one, five. So uh, remember the steps that we talked about. First, find the slope of the given line. Uh, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write that as m and then subscript given. And this one is really easy because the equation of the line is in um, slope intercept form. So y equals mx plus b, you can see m right here. The equation of this line is three. Therefore, the slope of a parallel line would also be three. Remember, parallel lines have the same slope. So finally, um, <clears throat> we want to write the equation of a line with slope three passing through one five. We've done that a couple times now, something similar, uh, using the point slope formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. The slope is three and x1, y1 is one comma five. That's kind of nice, no tricky negative signs. So that gives us y minus five equals three times x minus one. And now we'll put that in a slope intercept form and then we'll write it using function notation. So distributing that three gives us y minus five equals three x minus three. And then when we add five to both sides, we end up with y equals three x plus two. Don't forget we're writing it using function notation. So we're gonna write f of x equals three x plus two. All right. So now for the last example, uh, similar, we're looking for the equation of a line that is perpendicular to three X plus two Y equals five and passes through the point negative two, negative three. This one is just a little bit more complicated. Uh, main reason being that the given equation is not written in slope intercept form. So we have to do a little bit of work uh, to find the slope of this line. 3x plus 2y equals 5. So uh, I don't think we've done an example like this yet. So the way that you find the slope of a line uh, when it's not written in slope intercept form is to just rewrite it in slope intercept form. All right. So, uh, which means solve this thing for y. So first we will subtract three X from both sides. And that's gonna give us two Y equals negative three X plus five. And then we'll divide everybody by two. Which says that the equation of the given line in slope intercept form is y equals negative three halves x plus five halves. So the only thing here that's important to me is the slope. The slope of the given line is negative three halves. 
So now remember, we're looking for the equation of a perpendicular line. So what would be the negative reciprocal of negative three halves? Flip it over, change the sign. So that would be positive two thirds. All right, so now we need to find the equation of a line with a slope of two thirds passing through the point negative two, negative three. All right, so uh, I think it's probably okay to go over to a blank page here. Using the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. The slope is two thirds and x1, y1 is negative two, negative three. Okay, so we have y minus negative three equals two thirds times x minus negative two. So first let's uh, rewrite that x minus negative two and the y minus negative three, right? We'll write those as y plus three equals two thirds times x plus two. We'll distribute the two thirds, which gives us y plus three equals two thirds x plus four thirds. Okay, so now we get to a part that almost all of my students struggle with this next part, but this next part really is just pre-algebra, I promise you. We need to uh, solve that equation for y which means we need to subtract three on both sides, okay? <clears throat> so that is going to give us y equals two thirds x, and then what? Well, we have to figure out what is four thirds minus three. So why don't we do that part up here? Let's talk about four thirds minus three. Okay, to do four thirds minus three, you just have to get a common denominator, right? So put a, uh, a one underneath that three, and then your common denominator would be three. So four thirds minus something over three. What is that something? Well, you would multiply this by three over three, and that would give you four thirds minus nine over three. So when you do four thirds minus three, you get negative five thirds, okay? So I always need to take plenty of time to explain uh, how in this step I'm getting y equals two thirds x minus five thirds. All right, so my final answer is f of x equals two thirds x minus five thirds. All right, and that's gonna do it for section 8.1. We'll see you next time.